Hi guys, it is a lovely but chilly evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is now Sunday evening, September 6, 2020. It is Labor Day Sunday, 2020. And uh, so I guess this is supposed to feel like Saturday night to a lot of folks. It still feels like Sunday night to me. So as we prepare for our final well, our final unofficial last day of summer 2020. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do what I do every, well, it's whenever I can. Uh, and we're going to bring you the latest uh, dose of doom and gloom <clears throat> out of the mainstream media uh, this fine Sunday morning in the collapse. And uh, before I get into this, to the main topic of discussion from this article about the overkill hypothesis uh, showing up in science advances, uh, just want to touch here. We, we're going to start out with the specific and then hit the general. So this, uh, several versions of this story uh, this is the good old New York Times. New York Times, Sunday morning, the fourth biggest, the fourth biggest story on the planet, according to, to uh, Yahoo News. Good for Yahoo News putting this story as the fourth biggest story on the planet from the New York Times. Brazil fires burn world's largest tropical wetlands at unprecedented scale unprecedented, without precedent, has never happened before in history. A record amount of the world's largest tropical wetland has been lost to the fires sweeping Brazil this year. Scientists said devastating a delicate ecosystem that is one of the most biologically diverse habitats on the planet. Thank you, New York Times. <clears throat> the enormous fires often set by ranchers and farmers to clear land, but exacerbated by unusually dry conditions in recent weeks, have engulfed more than 10% of the Brazilian wetlands known as the Pantanal, exacting a toll scientists call unprecedented. The fires in the Pantanal have raged across an area the size of New Jersey, uh, according to an analysis by NASA. Yes. <clears throat> and to the north, the fires in the Brazilian Amazon, many of them also deliberately set for commercial clearing, have been ruinous as well. The enormous scale of the fires in the Amazon and the Pantanal, several of which were visible to astronauts in space, has drawn less attention in a year overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the corona panic, protest over police brutality, and the coming American elections. Do you think so? But experts call this year's blazes in the Pantanal a particularly jarring loss and the latest ecological crisis that is unfolded on the watch of President Jair Bozo Nero, whose policies have prioritized economic development over environmental protection. Um, Bozo Nero, who often makes assertions that are false, said some of the fires detected by satellites were likely campfires. This is Douglas C. Morrison, chief of the Biospheric Science Laboratory at NASA Goddard Flight Center. Quote, the fires in the Pantanal 
this year are really unprecedented. It is a massive area. And anyone who does not understand the dots between uh, the rest of this video, I guess I've had a failure to communicate. Uh, <clears throat> several versions of the mainstream media uh, version of this uh, that we're just going to read one of the mainstream media articles and then we're going to go to the source. We have the documents directly, but let's see how the mainstream media is playing this story. I just threw a dart. This is the Telegraph. <clears throat> Humans almost solely responsible for mammal extinctions in the past 126,000 years, study finds. Human activity was the cause of 96% of mammal extinctions in the past 126,000 years rather than climate change, according to a new study. Now, of course, what this is is just the latest in this never-ending BS debate whether it was humans in the overkill hypothesis, the arrival of humans taking out our fellow earthlings, or was it climate change that humans could have had nothing to do? The arrival of humans into a new landscape obviously could have had nothing to do with the collapse of populations of our fellow earthlings. So, of course, this ridiculous debate has been raging and will continue to rage. It is clear what side of this debate I am on. I, I have known, I think I first heard about the overkill hypothesis when I was about 12 years old. It made perfect sense to me when I was 12. It makes more sense to me uh, now than it did 48 years ago. And um, this is the latest evidence uh, confirming the, uh, the obvious conclusions able to be reached by any 12-year-old with a brain. All right. The arrival of humans to Australia around 65,000 years ago in the Americas some 24,000 years ago. I'm not, not, I love how they keep moving this goalpost. And the Americas, some 24,000 years ago, caused particular spikes in animal extinctions, according to the study in Science Advances. The researchers found similar results in Madagascar and the Caribbean, where animal extinction rates shot up after the arrival of the first humans. The study by a team of researchers from Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK predicts as many as 558 species. And what this is of large mammals, I think they're talking about animals that weigh, let's call it 100 pounds roughly, mammals that weigh over 100 pounds. The study by a team of researchers predicts as many as 558 more species could be lost in the next hundred years amid the highest spike in extinction rates since the dinosaurs disappeared 66 million years ago. That compares to 351 species extinctions since the beginning of the late Pleistocene 126,000 years ago, roughly the, edge, the end of the last ice age is what they're talking about here. Although rates have already been rising rapidly, do you think so? The conclusion that historical extinctions, meaning the ones so far, have been driven by human activity contradicts Huh. contradicts earlier studies which have suggested that climate change was responsible 
in particular for the extinction of megafauna such as woolly rhinos and mammoths 12,000 years ago, and I'm going to go off script here. You know, what they're talking about here is the North American uh, megafaunal extinction, which is the one that they usually talk about. And I don't think what people understand is that the North American megafaunal extinction, which truly was horrific, was one of many uh, megafaunal extinctions because everywhere humans have shown up, there uh, has been a megafaunal extinction. And the, the North American one has a little bit of a question mark over it, but as I've always pointed out, how come none of the other megafaunal extinctions don't have the climate change question mark? But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, the scientists compiled a large data set of fossils and found, quote, essentially no evidence, essentially no evidence for climate-driven extinctions, said co-author Danielle Silvestro. But the authors of the study, which was published in Science Advantage, Advances warned that climate change does now pose a unique threat to animal species, according to Silvestro, quote, together with, together with fragmented habitats, number one, poaching and other human-related threats, climate change, which is certainly a human-related threat, poses a large risk for many species, meaning from, you know, this point forward. Current extinction rates are around 1,700 times higher than those at the beginning of the late Pleistocene, the authors say. So, 17, when you're, when you're looking at large mammals, going extinct 1,700 times the speed they were going extinct. Uh, you know, when humans really started, um, you know, making their way uh, around the planet. Um, yes, okay, but we are going to go straight to the horse's mouth, because the, there are six or seven of this, so uh, with links over to this story from Science Advances, and I'm going to put the link, anybody who really wants to get the nitty gritty of this, <clears throat> this long involved in-depth study, it's got all your charts, and it's got all your graphs, and it's got dozens and dozens of references to other, <clears throat> you know, to other previous studies talking about the overkill hypothesis, which I don't, I don't want to insult the word overkill with the word hypothesis. It's open and shut. The jury is in on this, guys. Um, anyway, I, th this story has already been covered in other parts of the Doomosphere <clears throat> today. I don't want to just repeat what you can find elsewhere in the Doomosphere today. <clears throat> so, uh, we're just going to read directly from the study. This is, uh, this is talking in particular about Africa. Uh, it has just been one of my running themes uh, about uh, what we can look forward to uh, this century in, in Africa, where there is still quite a bit of megafauna left, probably for the reason, for two reasons, that humans evolved in Africa with these uh, megafauna, and as Andy the gardener was pointing out, uh, that it was the sleeping sickness and the setse fly that helped uh, the large megafauna of Africa withstand predation by humans till fairly recently. But uh, we're looking at 
we're, we're, we're making some predictions for Africa for the balance of the century. In particular for Africa, we can see that the predicted future human population growth alone, alone, future human population growth alone leads to significantly higher extinction rates compared to the extinction rates at present, which are already through the roof, without even considering the currently high threat status of so many species. This indicates that human population growth will pose a serious threat for the current biodiversity in these regions. Do you think so? And again, uh, Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, is in particular is the poster child of what I call planet nibbling with no help from the outside world, although you better believe the outside world, particularly China, is giving the extinction crisis in Africa a big boost with no help. Human population growth alone, just that variable, will take out every species of earthling humans share the planet with. They're only talking about large mammals here. But as we heard in Manga Bay, the, uh, the uh, Madagascar giant frog is on the list too. Okay, so just a couple of getting down towards the bottom. Okay, in case you are not aware of this, <clears throat> Humans are the main driver of mammal extinctions since the late Pleistocene, period. And of course, this study is just looking at mammals. So, humans are the main driver of bird extinctions since the late Pleistocene. Humans are the main driver of reptile extinctions since the late Pleistocene. Humans are the main driver of fish extinctions since the late Pleistocene. Humans are the main driver of amphibian extinctions since the late Pleistocene. Humans are the main driver of insects since the main driver of insect extinctions since the late Pleistocene. You could do this same study for every single kind of our fellow earthling on the planet. These, this is just the easy one. This is the low-hanging fruit. This is the large mammals. Uh, anyway, anybody who does not get this, you can say the same thing for any other fellow earthling than large mammals. Okay. In this study, we estimate specific times of shifts in extinction rates from mammal extinction since the beginning of the late Pleistocene. These estimates fully incorporate uncertainty surrounding the dating of fossil occurrences, blah, 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 blah. All right, get through the gobbledygook. Uh, you know, all of their, uh, ample, you know, their little disclaimers. Uh, okay, several lines of evidence, several lines of evidence, and they have dozens and dozens of references at the end of this, support the hypothesis, the hypothesis, the overkill hypothesis is what they're talking about here, that the observed overlap, the observed overlap of human arrival times 
and extinction rate increases in Australia and the Americas most likely represents a true causality rather than a result of external factors affecting both events such as climat climatic variations and associated changes in sea levels, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, first our correlation models show that past climate fluctuations are a poor predictor of mammal extinctions. Do you think so? Second, there is no evidence, there is no evidence of late Pleistocene extinction rate increases in Australia before human arrival despite large fluctuations there in climate and there is compelling evidence that no major climate or habitat shifts occurred in Australia during the inferred time of extinction rate increases, meaning humans killed them. Similarly, we find no evidence of extinction rate increases before human arrival in the Americas. Last, we do not find any evidence of extinction rate increases on other continents coinciding with the timing of the shifts in Australia and the Americas, which would be expected if large-scale changes in climate had caused the rate changes on these continents. You, you know, uh, it's just every way you look at this, every single way you look at this. It, uh, it is humans, humans, humans. As I say, you can get this little bitty asterisk uh, about some little dip, the, what is it, the driest, the later driest, something, uh, you know, some weird little tremor in the climate, you know, coinciding with about the same time humans got here. Uh, and, and, and try to make an excuse that humans had nothing to do with it when, as they say on every other continent where you see the same thing that happened, there is zero evidence that climate had anything to do with this and 96% of the preponderance of evidence supports the overkill hypothesis. Uh, that it is wherever humans show up, goodbye fellow earthlings. So, uh, okay, what is the future? Our future simulations show that we can expect large increases in extinction rates by the year 20. 100 compared to the present, meaning now when accounting for the current threat status of species. According to our models, the extinctions that have occurred in the past, meaning up to now, only represent the tip of the iceberg compared to the looming extinctions of the next decades. Our human impact has led to several species extinctions in the past, but additionally has severely, severely decimated the population sizes and habitats of many more. Uh, yes, anyway, and then they break all this down. So let's hear a few of the conclusions at the bottom uh, of this. Okay, we're going to read the, uh, uh, okay, let's read the, some conclusions. Our analysis of the extinction record and the analysis of all these other previous studies 
provide compelling evidence that humans have caused a substantial wave of extinction upon arrival on new land masses for mammalian communities that were not adapted to large primates as efficient predators as the ones in Africa were. <clears throat> I added that as the, you know that last part. Since then, we have increased our impact on the natural world. Do you think so? Which in the past centuries has reached unprecedented scales to satisfy our increasing energy and resource usage in all parts of the world. We are losing biodiversity every year, and with every extinct species and population, we lose unique evolutionary history. By the year 2100, we predict all areas of the world to have entered a second wave of extinctions. Our, simula our simulation results indicate that this additional wave of anthropogenic, meaning human-caused extinctions, may be much greater than the currently increased rates by several orders of magnitude. Yes, we find that Australia and the Caribbean in particular have already today entered the second extinction wave based on the extinctions that have occurred there during the past decades, including just the last year in uh, Australia, and they've already talked about what uh, you know, Africa is entering into. This shows that although our predicted future rates of extinction and associated biodiversity losses are shockingly high, they are within a realistic range since we can already see these future scenarios being manifested in parts of the world. The Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services recently outlined the primary drivers of biodiversity loss by order of global importance, which included land and sea use change, direct exploitation of organisms, climate change, and pollution. And of course, all of these will be growing, but you know, climate change is going to be, with each passing year, is going to be moving up to the head of the pack. And uh, once again, I have to give a nod to Book Hermit, uh, you know, pointing this out uh, that with no help from climate change, we've gotten ourselves into this mess. We're just now in the very beginning stages of climate change, but all this other stuff that nobody else is talking about uh, is going into the stratosphere and with no help from climate change will bring this planet down and you add the dark horse of uh, climate change to the list and it is goodbye planet Earth. Uh, we are doomed. And of course, do not forget that humans are megafauna, as go the megafaunal extinctions in the 21st century. Do not forget that you too are a megafauna. Anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, get back to my margarita and uh, my old Twilight Zone episodes. I've uh, really been enjoying comparing old Twilight Zone episodes to see how Rod Serling 
called it uh, 60 years ago, but uh, Ithaca resident Rod Serling had to say. But anyway, get out there and enjoy Labor Day 2020 while you still can. Bye, guys. Have you been bored to sleep again, little dog? It's been a long weekend. I need my beauty sleep.